All right, here we go. Kelly Clarkson. Damn. Damn. <laughs> Would you consider this tight? Yeah, it's definitely uh, holding that blood in the arm. Absolutely. <laughs> and it is extremely brutal. That's a big needle, folks. Welcome back, everybody, to Shift Fire, the exploration and appreciation of military culture. I'm Israel Wright, one of your hosts, and with me, as always, the wonderful, the amazing Cameron Fath. Welcome to this episode of Field Training Exercise, where we go ahead and bridge the gap between military training and civilian application. So today's episode is specifically going to be about the IFACT or the Individual First Aid Kit. Now this imperative piece of equipment is gonna contain everything a soldier needs to be able to treat injuries on the battlefield. Now before we dive in here, make sure you guys subscribe to our page to stay up on the latest from Shift Fire. We have a couple examples of different configurations of IFACs, right? We have the standalone IFAC. This one specifically is done by Haley Strategic. Those guys are badass. They make awesome equipment. This is their MedMac or the M3 IFAC. It's fantastic for what it is able to do. It's small, it's compact, it's very modular. Exactly. So this is my personal battle belt configuration, right? And it sits right on the back there. The fanny pack IFAC is a great option if you're balling on a budget, right? I can get this for $10, but also, everything that fits in this IFAC, which is a military IFAC intended for battlefield casualties, fits inside this IFAC. And I can configure it any way I want to, yeah. right? I can wear it in the front, I can push it to the rear, and it doesn't get in the way, it's super convenient. I love this IFAC. Like I said, I carried it overseas, it worked extremely well, but if I'm going for military application or if I wanna build a battle belt and I wanna have everything situated really where I want it to be, this IFAC is fantastic. So but I really wanna focus on this fanny pack because this is probably what you're gonna see more in the civilian world than the built IFAC. The battle belt. Than the battle belt. So let's check it out. First and foremost, something every IFAC should have, PPE gear, right? Gloves. A lot of times people overlook it just because they're like, I'm not gonna have time to put on gloves. But in the civilian world, like you don't know what they have, they don't know what you have. You wanna be as safe as possible. You don't know where they've been. You don't know where they've been. You don't know how many they've put in their mouth or you know, they put in their, in their hands, in their armpits. Know. I don't know, yeah, it's a weird world know, out there. But you wanna be safe and it's not in offense to them, it's to keep them from getting what you have because you're the real dirty you're bird. You're the dirty bird. No, I know. This is what's gonna prevent the biggest killer on the battlefield, which is massive hemorrhaging, right? Bleeds to your extremities, gunshot wounds, stabs, you name it. This is gonna be the first thing you go for. We're just stopping blood loss. That's the major thing about Absolutely. this, right? Absolutely. How you store these tourniquets is gonna be extremely important. If you put a tourniquet in your IFAC and it's still wrapped in the plastic and it's got the label on it, everything, you're doing something wrong. You want to eliminate as many steps as possible to where I can just pull this out and use it on my casualty extremely fast. Let's say you have a massively muscular arm and you just gotta exactly. put it on there, you know. And I do twist, twist, twist until the bleeding. Muscly, manly arm. I twist, twist, twist until the bleeding stops. I don't yep. want to hurt Israel. But that goes there and there, and I check the bullet wound, make sure it's not bleeding anymore, and boom, tourniquet. So that's how fast that can work. Yep. Because massive hemorrhaging is the scariest thing on the battlefield. It will kill you less than three to five minutes. Mm. Three to five minutes, you can be dead. This is gonna prevent that. So tourniquet should be the easiest thing that you can access in your IFAC. If you wanna keep it inside, I recommend keeping it right on top. So next we have our pressure dressing, right? Israeli bandage, pressure dressing, emergency trauma dressing. It's got many names, but it's got one purpose and it's to help control bleeding, right? So a lot of people know exactly what this looks like just cause it comes prepackaged just like this, but they've never actually opened it and use it. So the emergency trauma dressing, super awesome. All right, you got your Velcro here, and you got your sterile pad. It's great, right? So say we have a gunshot wound on his forearm. I'm just gonna go ahead, and this Velcro is gonna act as a locking mechanism. Boom, now it's locked in place, and all I'm gonna start doing now is wrapping. When I come over, hard, because pressure, right? I'm not you just gonna wrap it. You, you want it to be kinda tight. Exactly, and I just wanna go ahead and I pull and wrap, pull, wrap. And I wanna make sure, say there's another dressing or you packed a bunch of gauze on the bottom, I wanna make sure all that white is covered when I'm wrapping this hoe. Ah. And then when you're out of bandage, you're gonna see this big old Velcro. And these Velcros are actually new. On my bandages, they never had that. So that's pretty cool. And then finally, you'll have these two little grabbers. And you're just gonna find some real estate here, hook it on, 
hook it on, and you are good to go. Would you consider this tight? Yeah, it's definitely uh, holding that blood in the arm. Absolutely, so minor cuts, not necessarily gunshot wounds, but maybe puncture wounds or something like pretty gnarly gashes or slashes on this guy. Knife fights, for example. Samurai sword, Samurai shurikens. sword, exactly. It's ninja, ninja stars. stars. Your pressure dressing is gonna work just fine. That way you don't need to go into the turn kit. Let's go ahead and see what's next in our IFAC here. Just grabbing the first thing I can get my hands on. It's our Zapple, it's our Zapple sauce. No, this isn't Zapple sauce, my friend. These are gonna be occlusive dressings. Now, we know them in the military as exactly what they're called, halo seals, right? So typically gunshot wounds to the box. Occlusive dressings are gonna be what you primarily use on somebody's chest cavity, just because oh, you have- Oh, kind of area right yeah. in here. Okay. When I say the box, I refer to my vital organs. Everything that my ribs and my sternum is protecting, that is what we refer to as the box, just because those ribs are protecting such vital organs and really imperative to the functionality of how your body works, right? Mm. So that's why they're encased in something hard. Each package will come with about two halo seals inside. Looks like a... Top of a toilet seat. Top of a toilet seat, there you go. But halo seals are great. Like I said before, they're extremely sticky. They're extremely hard to get off once you put them on. So, say you have a very hairy man, or even a hairy woman. Nowadays, you Hey, we're not know. gonna discriminate. No, but you can actually use one of these, because hair is gonna be hair, blood, water, sweat. It's gonna make it extremely difficult to stick one of these on. Right. So before you put on, one of the things they teach is always wipe before you put it on, make sure it's dry. And you know, I'm a pretty hairy guy myself, so sometimes I'll give these to my girlfriend and I say, go to town, because daddy <laughs> needs to get smooth. Waxing can be expensive, folks. This is a yeah. cheap way to wax, you know. Cameron, I would like to try an experiment. I would like to, sure. to test the prank theory, so. Sure. Actually, I know these kinds of, I have kind of, I have one here myself that I would love to uh, test upon you. I will lend you a breast. Yes, yes, look at all that, look at all those dark hairs, folks. It's gonna be great, okay, I have. Hurry up before I change my mind. Yeah, before you have a crisis of conscience. There you go, I got the, the dress in there, I'm gonna peel it off. You're yeah. sleeping peacefully, dreaming of, Things. There's something on there! Oh, that was very firm. Yes. 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 It's all with the placement, folks, and the firmness. All firm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right, here we go. Kelly Clarkson. Damn! Damn. <laughs> oh, I got a few. Yeah, uh, only you a did. few, though. Oh, man. A few of the lighter ones. Should have let it sit a little bit. You're right. You should have let it, you know. I'm glad I can sacrifice it. Was, my it was body. true to life because, you know, you probably would have woken up unless you're a heavy sleeper, so we got to take it off real quick. Exactly. Let's see what else I have in my pouch. Okay, so I'm going to pull these both out just because they're variations of themselves. So, what we have here is hemostatic blood clotting gauze, right? So it's going to be vacuum packed, Z folded, and it is considered a hemostatic dressing just because it contains a specific chemical agent within the gauze that allows blood to clot faster and more efficiently. And then you have your standard gauze, which is just used to plug holes. Now I have a lot of experience with these. Ooh, do using, tell. Using these overseas. I mean, we were packing gunshot wounds at least daily. Because you were running, one of your capacities there is you were helping out with the a medical facilities. Yeah, yeah, so the CCP, we were in the CCP, we got over 600 hours of OR time under my belt. So seeing actual these in action, I've used these a lot and they were work fantastic in the right hand. So Sick. we're gonna show you guys what these look like real quick. One thing I like to do, and at least my team leader taught me, you don't just start shoving this thing in the hole. You wanna make a good knot size first, and then you find the hole and you shove it down with your thumb. And then what literally I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna take some slack and just keep shoving this in the hole. Like You're so. packing it because you want to stop the bleeding. You want to stop that stuff from squirting Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Right? I mean, out. everything. And I've put my fingers inside people and felt where the bullet wound is. And you just want all this gauze to pretty much get in there and pack up all that space and start basically soaking up all that soaking blood. Up the blood. Dude, I've been able to pack like three packets of gauze inside of a single bullet wound. Ugh. Yeah, so there's a lot of space inside. And if there is no more room for you to pack, you just bundle it up, stack it on top, take a trauma dressing, and start wrapping it. Extremely important, you can fit a lot inside of a person. What are you doing? You're stuffing that fabric inside their bodies and stuff? What gives? Really, you're just trying to stop the bleeding, right? You're trying to stop the bleeding you're trying to soak up all that blood, that hemostatic agent is gonna start clotting all those vessels that have been destroyed, right? Mm. So I mean, 
the bullet, especially if the bullet's still in there, it might be a little harmful to start packing. And that's another thing, you never pack wounds inside the box because there's endless area inside of here. And I'm just packing, I'm packing. You just towards, pack forever? Yeah, you're packing forever. And not to mention, you're packing towards vital organs and you can poke them, you can fuck them up. So let's see what's next in my IFAC. Ah, uh, ah, uh, folks. The MPA, or the nasal pharyngeal airway, right? This is a great tool to help clear someone's airway because if they're unconscious, you know, they might not be able to breathe. So right. this is imperative. And you know, we're gonna go into a little bit more detail in another video where we practice the application of the MPA. So stay tuned for that one. These are what's known as a needle D, or essentially a needle decompression, right? Now this is for the chest area, right? Absolutely. The ribs, uh, the, the lungs, more specifically. Absolutely. So we typically carry two, or you can carry even more. Some of our medics had 10, dozen, 15 of these on standby. <laughs> a lot of lungs. Yeah, just because if you think about it, any sort of trauma to the chest, right? My lungs, breathing is extremely vital to my survival, right? It's what's gonna pump oxygen through my body. It's what's gonna pump that blood. It's what's gonna make my heart go. So tension pneumothorax, right? That is gonna be one of the biggest killers on the battlefield, and in a nutshell, it's where if I have a gunshot wound in my lung, I close it with my occlusive dressing. There's nowhere for that air to go anymore. So my lung's just gonna continue to inflate and continue to inflate and continue to inflate until it becomes so big that it starts constricting my heart mm. and that's what's gonna kill me. So tension pneumothorax, scary, scary, scary on the battlefield and you can pretty much see a what's called a unilateral rise and fall of the chest. So I'm looking at someone's breathing. Typically a normal person, when they breathe in, their chest goes up and it goes down. But you'll be able to really see especially if you're hearing them go <laughs> and their chest is going <laughs> so this is what's going to be the best treatment for that and it is extremely brutal that's looks, a big needle folks this is a big needle yes. typically what, what gauge needle is this it's a 14 gauge needle so they have different gauges of these an intercostal space is essentially the space between each rib, right? And the best site for this to be dropped is gonna be between the second and third intercostal space. So one of the tricks that I learned that pretty much worked on any chest that I found, because everybody's different, some dudes with bigger chests, it's gonna be hard to even find the rib, especially Israel, because he's got a big beefy chest. Barrel here, chested he's... freedom fighter. Exactly, so what I like to do is I put my thumb on his clavicle, my pinky on his nipple, and right where my middle finger is, should be that space. Yeah, I found it right yep. there. But he's got a big chest and it was a little hard to find. So what else I can do, I can lift up the arm and go to my second spot, which is between the fifth and sixth on the rib right here in the lat. So what I do to find that super easily is just find the nipple, track it down, Oh yeah, there it is right there. It, it's painful. There's no way to describe it besides being painful. I'm literally sticking this needle inside of your chest and then dropping this catheter and allowing this catheter to breathe and expel some air for me. This, especially in the military, is gonna be exactly what you need to be able to make sure someone is stable, right? Mm. That's our main goal is not to, you know, solve them of all their injuries, but to get them in a stable position to where we can get them to higher care and that higher care can take over and they can either go into surgery or be placed somewhere that can help them in a better situation. Right so, on, man. That's cool. I actually have a couple supplemental materials here. Oh, too. really? Your saline solution. I got my tubing here. And then they have these IV kits for the saline lock kits. Those are great. Stand by for those. Finally, the SAM splint, right? So this is, you know, something that won't be really found in your IFAC. I like to have these it's a bit laying chunky, around. It's a, big it's a bit, bag. yeah, it's big. I mean, big, big, big squad aid bags in the military. Was the, pretty much the medical carrier. They will have SAM splints in there, and they're exactly what they sound like, right? It's a type of splint. This it's, is for a broken bone. Exactly. If you have a fracture, a broken bone, you can splint it in place. You just need to get a couple of tie downs for it, and this SAM splint is extremely ergonomic. It's moldable. It's pretty much a aluminum plate and surrounded by some padding, but this one's a 36 inch version and Ooh, pretty nice. much it folds like that and I can build anything I really need. I like to do a little fold. So if his arm is fractured, see I made you a little handle there. Oh, no. I basically splint this around like so and then I could tie it down in place, just to basically know. splint his arm in place, right? So these things can be done in multiple configurations and they're remoldable, refoldable, really good. And I mean, like for 
your arm or your leg, this will splint it exactly in place. And North American Rescue actually makes this one. They are kind of the standard for all these medical equipment on the table here. So we have no relation to them, but they make awesome. Folks, we're really happy you were able to join us for this episode of FTX or Field Training Exercise. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And jump in that comment section. Let us know your favorite part of this video or future ideas for future videos. We'd love to hear it from you guys. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Shift Fire. I was told never to live alone. Right, anytime, anything anywhere. Can happen, anything can happen. Yeah. Mm. I come from behind you now. Mmm. Ah! Smells like basic training.